All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology again. And we have finished the amazing, amazing, amazing webinar on Navamsha. And I'm very sure you'll be thrilled with so many questions. So one question I have is regarding the Atma Karaka. How? Because there's this controversy regarding Karakamsha and Lagnamsha. So can you just clarify what that is? Um, we use the Karakamsha to see everything the person is uh, wanting to do seeking to do, uh, attempting in their life, all right? Um, for example, when we see trines to Karakamsha, it's all the knowledge that the soul wants to acquire. The tenth end up from Karakamsha, or Atmakarka Navamsha, that is, it shows everything that you want, everybody whom you want to work for, and even can show wealth that you wish, wish to acquire. It, it shows also whom you respect, tenth from Karakamsha. Um, but the idea is, that uh, whatever you learned about the Navamsha Lagna, or you call it Lagnamsha, we call it just Navamsha Lagna. Um, uh, Lagnamsha means something else. But whatever you see from Navamsha Lagna is what is, and whatever is from Karakamsha or Atmakarka Navamsha is what you seek. Okay, and Karakamsha is the sign where the Atmakaraka is placed in the Navamsha. Correct. All right. And now some people say you take it back to the Lagna chart and then you study. So what is the Rashi chart? Mm -hmm. There's a way to do that, but we don't call it Karakamsha. We call it Karakamsha Ka. All right. And uh, we, there's a way to do that. Um, but it will follow the same paradigm as I was explaining that. Um, let us say uh, we take. Um, is there a case I should be focused on? Let us say we took a Kardashian's chart, right? And I was talking about Mars. And we said Mars was in Libra Navamsha. Mm -hmm. But in Rashi chart, Libra is her 12th house. Okay, so I'm taking a planet's Navamsha and putting back in the Rashi chart. Yes? So that means I get to know that her 12th house is what is the discussion point when it comes to her Mars. All right? It's focused on the topics of 12th house, relationships. Twelfth house is important for marrying somebody. Affairs also. For example, her her uh, her fame began because of a sex tape. So what's that about? That's a twelfth house thing, you know, whom you're sleeping with. So her fame is centered around that. The second chart, Mars was not in Libra Navamsha, it was in Scorpio Navamsha. So that comes back to Scorpio and Rashi chart, which is her lagna. It's focused on her skill, her ability, her wants and desires, not something that happened in a relationship, like in case of Kardashian, all right? So similarly with Karakamsha, you can bring that back to the Rashi chart, then it's called Karakamsha Ka. And when you see that, you're seeing, okay, which house is that from Lagna? What is the focus of my soul? What is the soul, which are the topics my soul wants us to talk about all the time? Mm -hmm. okay. Karakamsha itself is a very broad topic, but it's a very spiritual topic. As soon as you start touching it, you have to understand that you are touching some of the drive that your soul is having. In this case, it's not appropriate to call it soul, but spirit. Because soul, soul as, a, it, as technically the, the term soul, does not apply to anything which has the, 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 the karana, the desire to do karma. All right? It is the spirit, the mind and soul conjoined, which causes you to have a desire for something, to want to do something, to want to achieve something, to go in a certain direction. It's the mind which is causing that. The Atma Karaka is a mix of soul and mind together. So it is taking you in certain directions. Do this, do that, focus on this, be very intensive of that. It's doing that in the chart. All right? Yeah. So, so that is what Karakamsha is. You cannot use these principles from Karakamsha blindly. Just because I want to be a musician does not mean I will be a good musician. Just because I want to be working in property does not mean I'll be good at working in property. So in the end, you need the Navamsha Lagna to tell you whether you benefit or not. All right? Then usually, this Karakamsha can show things that we are doing and desiring to do which don't make sense. All right? Uh, for example, if I take just the Navamsha in this context, then I'll say, okay, second from Nava Karakamsha. We said that's Bhoga, right? But second from Karakamsha, the soul doesn't eat anything. Yes. So it, it does the opposite. It's feeding something. Okay. 
So whatever is second from your karakamsha or atma karakinalamsha, that is, that is what you are feeding. All right. Now imagine this. Let us say your atma karaka is in fifth house in nalamsha. All right. Now second from atma karaka will be six thousand nalamsha. What are you feeding? Six thousand. So you're feeding your punishment, your pain. So this is a person who is actually hurting themselves because they are feeding an activity which is ending up causing 6,000 results. So when you lose Karakamsha, you can start getting an, a view of the chart which is very uh, intricate. You get to understand, oh, this person is doing this to themselves. They're doing that to themselves. All right? So you don't want the second from the Karakamsha to be a bad house in Navamsha, from Navamsha Lagna. Okay? Yeah. Or any of those houses for that matter. You don't want to, want to do a job, 10 from Karakamsha, which is actually causing you difficulties because of Navamsha Lagna's placement. So it's a very different view. Better yet, stick to first Navamsha Lagna and see what is it that's finally happening to my life. Okay. See that? So, uh, yeah, so the next question would be uh, regarding Ishta Devata. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, Ishta Devata is the, uh, it's the 12th from the Atma Karaka's placement. So, that if there is a planet, then that is your Ishta Devata. The 12th from the Karakamsha or Atma Karaka, we use that word interchangeably. Karakamsha means Atma Karaka in Namasha. Okay. Yes. So the twelve from that karakamsha, that is the ishta devata. Yes. Now it is always the lord of the twelve that is the ishta devata. Okay. Technically, it is always the lord of the twelve. The reason is that lord of the twelve from karakamsha is the final ishta devata. But if there's a planet in the twelve from karakamsha, that's one which was leading you to your ishta devata. Okay. Yes. Now, the trick here, there's a bit of a trick because the planet there or loading is only showing you a form which can be the Ishta. Okay? For example, let us say Mercury is in 12th from Karakamsha. All right? Or Mercury loads 12th from Karakamsha. Then, that Mercury can be Vishnu or any form of Vishnu. If the person is a Shaiva, the person might perform, uh, prefer the form of Sadhya Jata Shiva. If the person is a Shakta, the person may perform, uh, prefer Rajeshwari. Her other name is Tripura Sundari, all right? Or Bal, Bal, Bal Tripura Sundari, uh, Shodashi is another name. So that is if they prefer Devi. So you cannot restrict the person. I cannot say, oh, Mercury is in 12 from Karakamsha, you like Vishnu. All right, or Vishnu is the Ishta. I cannot say that. I have to first figure out, does the person prefer Shaiva or Vaishnava or Shakta? Is the person Christian? Is the person Muslim? And then I figure it out. All right? So, so then you first have to figure that out. And then you say, okay, this is the Ishta you should consider. And you can say, oh, go in that specific direction. All right? So you need to first figure that out. And the uh, question is, are there astrological principles to do this? Yes, they're intricate though. They require study of Jamini Sutras. Um, so th that's for those who want to learn that. Um, otherwise, it's simple to ask. So you prefer Shaiva Shakta? What do you prefer? Are you a Christian? Muslim, what do you prefer? And then you try to figure out based on that graha, the appropriate form of God. Okay? Okay. So the next thing I would ask is... So I have to uh, uh, talk about this term, Ishta. Um, um, some people disagree with this approach, 12 from Karakamsha, when it comes to Ishta Devata. All right? Some people say, no, no, it's not 12 from uh, Karakamsha. You first have to find the, mo the best planet in Rashi Chah because of the word Ishta. Ishta means most beneficial. But in this context, we're interested in that form of God who will give us moksha. And moksha is in a small way, let me be free of my problems. Right? Like... You're in the wrong job, you're in the wrong marriage, your kids are not behaving, you're, you are having problems with your, with your family. Worship Ishta Devata. Get, get mukti from the problem. That doesn't mean leave the problem. It means you're going to get a solution where you can deal with the problem. So 
So the reason we have this Ishta Devata is to ensure that you have one go-to place when you have a problem. If a person is regular in their meditation or worship of the Ishta Devata, I say meditation because you don't necessarily need mantra, all right? And if you are regularly doing that for Ishta Devata, then even before the problem starts, you'll get the solution. Okay. Sometimes even while saying the Ishta Devata mantra, you'll end up starting another mantra and you don't even know it until you say the mala. You still will just say, you need this mantra. Chuk! Now you're doing another mantra. That is Ishta Devata. The other approach to Ishta Devata is uh, what I call, it's, um, it's not the same, it's, it's more at a, at, at a less level uh, spiritually. And that level is, you say, okay, which is the best graha in the chart? That is Ishta Devata. Make a person do lots and lots of japa of that. This is usually only related to the Rashi chart. They do japa japa only of that, and then life is supposed to be good. And they, they just say, which is the best graha? That is the Ishta Devata in Rashi chart. This approach is very, very different. And it only focuses on material wealth, not spiritual wealth. All right? Spiritual wealth also implies material, if done correctly. Because mukti doesn't mean you will be a sadhu living on the mountain. It means you'll be free of your problems. Yes. So, and true mukti is not that you run away from the problem, but that you can completely control the problem. That is ishta. Okay? Yeah. We will say, first figure out which among the um, pancha devata the person is inclined to. So I said only three, right? But the person could be uh, of somebody, a surya worshiper or a Gane ganapat, or a Ganesh worshiper. There are five parts in mantra shastra, all right? If you're into Raja Yoga, then as soon as you know the Devata, you should focus on a chakra. Shiva is in the third eye. All right? So Raja Yogis, they will meditate on the third eye until they see Shiva. Mm -hmm. They won't do mantra necessarily. Yeah. So the next question that's very famous is why Venus is called the Atma Karaka for the Navamsha? So I've never heard it being called Atma Karaka, but I've heard it being called Karaka. Karaka. Right? Okay. Yes. The main karaka. Um, now, uh, that's because it's, it, this is only, however, important from the perspective of marriage. All right? It's also called the karyesha of the Navamsha. Karyesha may be a more appropriate term. Because it is the most important planet when it comes to relationships, very simply put. And there is a system that we use where we treat Venus as the lagna in the Navamsha. And then we can see everything that's happening in relationships in detail. Yeah. So and yeah. So and the the next question is like people have these placements sometimes. Like they were they were debilitated Venus or they were an exalted Venus sometimes because these are most frequently asked. So I'm just asking these questions. Mm -hmm. What does it mean if somebody can have an exalted Venus? Does it mean that they are blessed in relationship in the Navamsha? Especially, I'm asking. Not necessarily. No. 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 No, we are, in, we are interested in the sign of Venus, yes. Because uh, wherever Venus is, that sign, that is what happiness you will get in your first marriage. All right. So if it's in Pisces, you will be very happy in your first marriage. Okay? And then the second marriage is eight from Venus. So uh, okay. why is this relevant? Because maybe you have Venus in Scorpio, like Hitler, right? And then he will not be, he'll find, he'll find his spouse treats him very cruelly. Venus is Scorpio. And then you have to go eight from. Next marriage will be Gemini. Eight from Scorpio. So that's how you'll feel in his next marriage. So Gemini is very, uh, very open and can be a bit promiscuous also. All right. So maybe he won't be happy with that in the second marriage. So then we'll go to third marriage. Eight from Gemini, which will be Capricorn. Then he meets a very cold person. Somebody who is not treating him very nicely. So he says, I, this is not good for me. So he'll go to the next marriage, he'll go to Simha, and there he'll meet somebody very proud, oh, very proud. And if he likes that, he'll stay, otherwise he'll go to Pisces, which is the eighth from Libra, and say, oh, finally I'm exalted. So Venus in Navamsha tells you how you're doing in the specific marriage. So you first need to figure out which marriage the person is in. The person comes to you, oh, I've already had a divorce, I'm in my second marriage. Okay, eighth from Venus in Navamsha. Now you see that. How happy is the marriage? 
Okay. And here, uh, sometimes people these days, everybody, like most of the places, they have relationships. Many people may not be married. So in that you, context, yeah, you have to debate that if it's a long term relationship, then it will still be activated in Navamsha. All right. Yeah. This also implies maybe Venus has a strong yoga with the Lagna, because that means the person is accepting Gandharva Vivaha. Okay. So if you have charts and the person has Venus in Lagna having Rashi Drishti or Lagna, Rashi Drishti, and it's the strongest planet associating with the Lagna, then you will say, okay, Gandharva Vivaha is possible here. I may not know what the relationship is because they may not be married and they will still have the a long -term relationship. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's that's something you need to consider. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and sometimes people like in some places it can happen that they're just married sometimes, but they have no attachment to the spouse or something. So in that case, what do you think will? And that is again that Venus, right? Okay. Yeah. And uh, this one thing like, is uh, like uh, you can have some peculiar things happen with Venus also. Like if Venus is in a Saturn sign and or join Mercury. These two are uh, what we call Napunsaka planets. So they tend to cause a bit of a, a blur when it comes to the genders. So what happens is that you can have a Venus is in Capricorn and Navamsha, you will have a homosexual approaching you for marriage. All right? All right. And you may not be homosexual, but they will be, and, and that's what your Venus is indicating, right? So that will be the tendency in matters of marriage. All right? Um, so so that, that will be there. Okay. Similarly, if you're homosexual and you don't have that Venus or, or in Capricorn or Gemini or whatnot, you're having people from the opposite gender always approaching you saying, when am I going to find somebody I like? So a person who is gay or lesbian is having a real problem in such cases, right? So that we have to be attentive about with Venus. Mm -hmm. And now the next thing I would ask is, suppose we have any exalted planet in the Lagna chart and it gets debilitated in the Navamsha. So people fear that, oh, all my Bhagya is lost. So what is your comment on that? You have to debate if you are having Bhagya from that planet to begin with. Okay. So, so like, yes. And for the opposite Debilitated in Navamsha, that planet has gone down the drain. Yes. If it is debilitated in D9. Yeah, then that planet is flush worthy. Okay, it's out in the toilet. There's a problem there. There is. But you don't know if that's your problem or, or somebody else's problem. You don't know. Because that debilitated planet could be debilitating an enemy. You can also see enemies in your Lagna chart. Yes, Rashi chart. You can also see enemies there. Mm -hmm. So if the, if the enemy is being debilitated, that's good for you. Okay. So that debate has to first be there. But we do say that if a planet is debilitated in Amamsha, it causes Durbhagya of some type because you have performed Adharma in the last line. Some Adharma was done in the last line on your part. And that was done to that person indicated by the debilitated planet in the last line. All right. So uh, Bish Bhagwan is not happy with you. He's not happy because of that nature planet. And uh, the person should do Mahavidya eventually to overcome that, to overcome that suffering, Mahavidya of the Graha. Then they were going to have a better life. Um, but uh, the essence that you need to do as an astrologer is to first ascertain who is this benefiting this debilitated planet? Who is, this, who is suffering from this debilitated planet? You cannot you give the example of Lagna. So the way we decide is the Aruda Lagna. Okay. We decide from the Aruda Lagna, is that planet supporting me or is it against me? If he's against me, let him be debilitated in Navamsha. Oh. All right? Let it, this, is, this can be a bit peculiar. Um, if Mercury is in, is in bad houses from the Aruda, third and sixth especially, then you don't want him to be strong if you want material wealth. You want him to be weak. So then Mercury debilitated in Rashi or Navamsha is brilliant. Okay. All right. Mercury, is, therefore, you want to be weak. Uh, Venus, the same. In third or sixth in the Aruda, you want Mercury to be weak. I give an example of Kim Kardashian, Nietzsche, Shani, and Navamsha, right? Extremely wealthy. All right. There is some Adharma going on from last life, yes, but that is going to make her wealthy in this life. 